This is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains in Missouri, USA. We're going to do a walkthrough of Tandy Assembly 2024 and we'll start out with Friday evening after the Tech Talk presentations have concluded and it'll be a view from my table and then we'll do some walking around and kind of do the same thing on Saturday. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They not only do PCBs and Flex PCBs, they also have 3D printing service and injection molding service, they do CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, they also have a thriving maker community where you can share projects and check out what other people are doing. For your next project head on over to PCB Way. So this is Friday evening and I'm just panning around from my table uh, to the right there dressed up fancy as Ian Maverick from Australia. He comes every year. And we've got some uh, big box Tandys, color computers, uh, Model 1. And we kind of get over and a fella set up a kind of a workshop table where people could come and get stuff worked on, which is a neat idea. And he brought lots of tools and stuff with him. And then right to my left is Randy Kindig from the Floppy Days podcast. And here was the first of many flubs I did during recording this. This is Jordy. This is Ian's son. And he just gave me a really nice interview and I managed to mess it up. I think I accidentally hit the record button a second time and turned it off. So uh, we'll walk down the row here. I've got a Model 1, some brand new Model 1 keyboards, which are fantastic by the way. These are actually really great reproductions, very well made. And this is uh, Jay uh, at Newsoft's booth. He always has a nice display. He does a great job on badges and stuff, uh, replacement badges for your uh, TRS 80s. And if we can sneak around here, oh, there's Randy from Floppy Days, his table. There's Randy. And he also does a nice display. And you should check out his podcast if you've not already seen it. some documentation he had out for display got a model one there some cocoa stuff got a cocoa taken apart and on the other side of the aisle uh, this is bill set up now this is an lnw80 which is a sort of clone of a model one I've actually got this here with me. Uh, he sent me the board earlier and he brought the case to the show. I brought the board and I took them both home with me. It's a very interesting machine and we'll do a series of videos on it trying to get it running. It was a kit that somebody never got quite assembled so it took a while to go through and figure out what parts are there, what parts won't, uh, what parts weren't there, if they were the right parts or not the right parts. Uh, the case is kind of a homemade deal, and you can see Bill trying to get the keyboard back in. The guy with the fancy beard and mustache is Rude from the Netherlands. He's a really super nice guy. So just going to play around with that and try to get it back together. So their persistence pays off. And they eventually get the keyboard and the trim pieces and everything snapped back into the the end panels for the keyboard which are wooden blocks painted black and that bottom cover wants to fall off and Bill will drop that into the case and wait till you see how that keyboard is wired together when we do the video on it. Oh my gosh, that's going to be the last thing I work on. It's really a thing. Nice piano hinge on the case there, covers it up. Very nice setup. We'll go back over to the other side. Got some of the Tandy 1000 stuff, color computers, uh, some MC10 stuff. Uh, these are MC10s with a 3D printed expander in the middle to add joystick ports and things. Very neat idea. Uh, this is Ian Maverick setup. Uh, it's got some of the boards he makes that are replicas of TRS-80 boards and new stuff. I got a Model 2 hard drive controller board from this year. 
Now we go on to some more color computer stuff that looks like a SD drive type cart plugged into it. Some big wooden joysticks, tandy PC stuff. Uh, the guy brought this last year. It is a relay computer. He also did some development on uh, MC10s back in the day. And the relay computer is controlling this little robot. Kind of a neat setup. And there's a lady who does these custom uh, color computers painted pink. And these are actually very, very well done. Uh, it's an impressive job. It's not my style, but she does a wonderful job. My favorite joystick, Wico Command Control, connected to a Model 1, a clear case for a Model 1 that was 3D printed. These are replica uh, Archer Radio Shack amplified speakers. I'm going to get those when they come out. It's cool. There we have a Model 100. And that was like a Model 3, I think. Or a Model 4. This is a Model 3. I can't tell. And you can see this guy here. There's a lot of people around there, so you can't get it. He had a telephone line sitting there set up with Tandy's. I think it was a TPS something. Maybe it was a, a terminal, you know, electronic teletype type thing. And down here on the end, we've got, oh, here's Don French. I got to meet him. And we'll turn the corner here. Here is Steve Leininger. Uh, Steve was the engineer that developed uh, Model 1, and Don was the guy that spearheaded the whole project and made it happen. Absolutely fantastic to meet these guys and get to talk to them. This is Lawrence here. Uh, we'll see a nifty little gadget he made right at the last minute before he came to the show a little later. I couldn't get into it right now. We'll work our way up toward the registration table. The, the guy walking away in the blue shirt, that's Malcolm. We'll see something that he loaned me for the show later. Oh, this thing was a hoot. So it's a Model 3, I think. And when we press on the keyboard, smoke comes out of it <laughs> kind of hard to see in the video but it's a great visual effect there we go lots of smoke what an interesting idea you need to see it actually lit up and running and uh, you know just do that randomly if somebody's using it that would be a hoot you know, the t-shirts and sweatshirts for sale. I got a uh, zip-up sweatshirt. It was fantastic. I've worn it just about every day I've been back because it's been cool. T-shirts. And there's Pete and his son. Pete is one of the driving forces making candy simply happen. Board with the sponsors on there. I'm going back around to this other aisle now. You can see it you know, on Friday night. It was rather busy. This is Tandy networking stuff. Uh, they came up with methods to network the computers together for classrooms and things like that, which was kind of neat. You know, for the early computers for classrooms, it worked off the cassette port, which was you know a cheap way to, for teachers to distribute programs to each computer, that type of thing. A candy color TV slash monitor. I don't think I've ever seen one of those before. Here we have some candy PC compatibles, the Sensation, that type of thing, color computer, Model 1, uh, Model 1 parts that are working. These guys were nice. This is a father and son. I actually did a nice interview with them, but I managed to somehow screw that up too. I don't know what I was doing when I made that happen. And I forget whose table that is. Lots of parts and things. Uh, I think we just passed Jim Brain's table right in here. It's his stuff. He always has a lot of interesting things. This is some type of color computer compatible sort of thing. Model 4, Model 3, Model 100. Now we're back up at the end of that aisle, uh, right beside my table. This is one of Stephanie Allaire's uh, Phoenix 6809 boards that's running the recent port of 
Um, well, I forget what the name of the operating system is now for the, the Coco OS 9, my Nitrous OS 9. Uh, I'll put a link to that video where the guy talks about porting that uh, in the description. Some more color computer stuff, including a little portable uh, drill battery pack powered MC10, which is kind of neat that had a mobile base to it. Uh, the guy that we seated that we just panned past, uh, which you'll see here again, is John, uh, one of the guys in Tandy Emeritus. They make reproduction back planes and card cages and stuff for the 8 inch systems. Really great stuff. They did a very good job on it. He was the head developer of Xenix, which is a Unix operating system uh, put out by uh, Microsoft for the Tandy business machines. And so here we're going to take a look at the uh, table stuff people donate to go for the auction and the auction she used to raise money to put on the show. So people bring in stuff and they donate it and sometimes it's like, you know, a printer for parts, uh, some test equipment, you know, uh, old computers of various types. You never know what you're going to find. Uh, that's where I got my Model 2 last year. There's a couple of pocket computers there. A little bit of everything. Uh, some gift baskets from Canada. Boxes of magazines. All sorts of crazy stuff. Disk drives for a Coco. T-shirts. Those were TRS-80 Radio Shack related. Um, they call that a, a roller ball for a Coco. One of the IBM convertibles. Brief shot of my table, which is, of course, pocket computers and the uh, prototype Model 100. Malcolm, the guy I pointed out earlier, uh, loaned me this board to display with the prototype Model 100. This is a prototype uh, software development system for the Model 100. Uh, the ribbon cable you see there plugged into the system bus connection and it the four 8k EEPROMs get mapped into the space take, normally taken up by the option ROM so it let a developer more easily develop programs without worrying about the goofy option ROM socket and pinout and things like that. It brought signals and things out to these boards. And you notice that big yellow wire there uh, on the right, that would have hooked to that mystery wire that was sticking out of my prototype Model 100, so that's another mystery solved. This is Saturday between presentations, again starting out from my little table. And I'll fast forward through all the stuff we've already seen about in here. Toward this end is where I bought Model 12. More of the networking stuff. And that was a really nice group there. I don't know who bought that. There's Jim Brain, Jay, uh, Floppy Days, PC Stuff, Cocos, and here's Ian. Here we have Ian with a Tandy hard drive setting on top a Model 4P. And note that this hard drive, which is probably all of 20 megabytes, is half as big as the computer. And he's talking to the owner and he's trying to get it formatted and tested. So he'll poke away on the 4P and the drive actually does respond. And yeah, that is a real five and a quarter uh, full height MFM hard drive in there. That still works and it sounded pretty decent too. And as you can see here, Ian did get the hard drive to respond. It actually worked. It was formatting and reading back. And it's kind of amazing that so after 40 years, the drives which weren't that reliable then, some of them still work. And we'll do some more walking around. Uh, here's our pink Cocos again. Again, those are really nicely done. The reproduction speakers. The thing with the dials on it is an old Radio Shack a digital computer kit. I had a later version of that which had springs and switches. And this little thing which Lawrence brought. And I'll get zoomed in on it here. And that is a ESP32 running a TRS-80 simulator in a 3D printed TRS-80 
uh, Model 3 looking case. It was just the coolest thing. And that there beside it is a Tris IO all-in-one. Well, I hope you had enjoyed this little walkthrough Tandy Assembly 2024. Uh, this is like my fourth year going. It's always a good time. The people are great. It's nice to uh, meet in real life, as the kids say, uh, the folks you normally interact with only online. You get to see them for a few days out of the year. Uh, if you ever have a chance to go, I would highly recommend it. Uh, it's a good time. Hope to see you there.